I'm George F. Mills, World War II veteran in the European Theater of Operation, four battle stars, Company E, 109th Infantry, 28th Division. We, uh, the 29th Division, made the landing on Normandy uh, June the 6th. I wasn't in that. That's, I'm the 28th Division, the Keystone Division, which is Germans call a bloody bucket. And uh, as soon as the 29th established enough beachhead for us to start fighting and get enough equipment on there, we landed in the first battle we had was at St. Lowe, which is Normandy on the beach. And we took St. Lowe. The 29th had taken St. Lowe. Germans had taken it back from them because it's a vital road going out to Cherbourg. And then we took it and, of course, went from there on across France. We were uh, Third Army under General George Patton. And every little village and every town from there to Paris, we, we liberated. And when we uh, got to Paris, we, they wanted uh, a parade down Chantilly Boulevard. So we, uh, and the viewing stand of de Gaulle and Eisenhower, and Patton, Marshall, and uh, we marched 24 abreast from the Arc de Triomphe to Notre Dame Church. And then we went, we were there, went there two nights. There's no fighting in Paris. Uh, Germans kind of loved Paris and they withdrew because they knew we'd tear it all to pieces with artillery. And uh, so they withdrew and the only fighting that was done in Paris was the free French got the snipers that were left in Paris. and. Uh, we left Paris with the First Army, Hodges, north through the rest of France into Belgium, Luxembourg, and uh, all across Belgium, and then hit Luxembourg, and we, it's strange, we went to the extreme far end of Luxembourg and penetrated the German line, which is the German border. Uh, two pillboxes, we lost uh, five men trying to take those pillboxes. That's the first pillboxes we'd hit so we didn't know how we were going to combat them. And then we uh, took them at night with hand grenades. And the other four we took was at night with hand grenades. And uh, from there we were, went into, back into Luxembourg and went into the Hurricane Forest and, which is, an, is another Siegfried line. And we were fought in the Hurricane Forest. The battle was so tough and there's so much artillery thrown in there that we couldn't get the wounded out. And you couldn't, the only thing could get in there was a weasel. I don't know whether they have a weasel here or not, but weasel is a track instrument to crawl over the trees and limbs and things. And then, we lost some men in there. We were sent back to Dykirk, Luxembourg to be brought back up to strength. And uh, there were three or four days. And we were sent from there to uh, Furen, Luxembourg, right on the German border, in the little village of Furen. And it was very peaceful. It was like a summer vacation. Our supply was down in Walls, which is three quarters of a mile down the hill from, from Furin. And uh, Ed Batter is a supply sergeant, he's a good friend of mine. And it was so peaceful, I, I told the first sergeant I was going down and to see Batter and spend the night with him in the kitchen. And the night of the 15th of January, 1944, I went down there and we slept in a little old barn and at five o'clock uh, morning of the 16th, rockets and artillery was coming in by the hundreds. And I knew we were getting hit up in the fury. And so the Jeep was loading pancakes and syrup and sausage to go up to the troops. So I, I went back up with the uh, Jeep. And uh, 
that was the start of the Battle of the Bulge. And uh, the 5th Panzer Division come around our left flank and the 373rd Vanguard Division come around the right flank. And there's, of course there's 200 in our company. And we were in that little town and uh, the Jeeps were running us ammunition and they moved the two Tiger tanks up on the hill and the morning of the 17th they knocked out the two Jeeps. And um, we were needing ammunition, there's a light tank down there and we talked that tank into bringing us ammunition. Battalion couldn't get to us. And uh, the morning of the 18th, uh, the tank come up and there's so many Germans in the yard. We'd withdrawn most all of our troops back into the Betzer house, which is a three-story house. It's a bed and breakfast and where our headquarters was. And uh, when we pulled them all back in there, we were only firing when they'd come over the wall around the, there's a wall around that house in the front of it. And that's the only time we'd fire because our ammunition was getting so low. And the tank come up and he was so excited, he turned around and started back. And one of those tigers got him. So we had no hopes of getting ammunition. And the night of the uh, 18th, we could defend the whole house except the north end. There's no doors or windows in the north end of it. Uh, they turned a, a bazooka loose on the north end. I went back to find out what was going on. And they turned another round in there and I got strapped off of that. And then they turned a flamethrower in there and set the house on fire. And we took uh, inventory, we had six rounds of ammunition so Captain Curitan said, no way we could fight that many troops with three rounds or six rounds of ammunition. So he surrendered the company. And all of the civilians was in the basement they called a root cellar. And the Germans wanted the civilians to come out first. So we put the civilians out and then we went out and uh, they marched searched you, you know, be sure you didn't have a bayonet or something, and uh, walked us off that night. Uh, off or the next day we got the little house where they interviewed us, and then they took us to Stylogger 4B, and they fingerprinted you and photographed you, and they separated you. They took officers, put them in concentration camps. They took uh, all of the privates and put them on work farms and groups, wherever they need them. Took all NCOs, British and American, and started us walking towards Czechoslovakia. We walked for five months. Um, no food, they never give us any food. The only thing you'd have is what you'd steal, and if they caught you stealing it, they'd shoot you or turn the dogs on you. And, uh, we got to Stalager 8A on the Czechoslovakian border. We was there two nights, and the uh, Russians were moving in from there. We could hear artillery. In the morning, the next, the second morning, they turned the Americans around and started us back towards the uh, American front. We must have traveled uh, eight or ten days, and we were in a barn lot and I heard a tank coming and I kept looking for the tank and when the, I could see it it was a half track and a command car and when it got down to where it turned a big old star on the side if you look at some of these instruments here these vehicles there'll be a big star on the side of them we recognize it as American so we took the guards over and by the time they got down there uh, we had the guards as prisoners. They only had three gallons of food, and they gave us uh, those three gallons, but there was 240 of us left at that time, and uh, that wouldn't feed 240, so we killed one of the farmer's calves and his potatoes and, and made enough soup to feed everybody. And they trucked us back to an airfield where they were flying the British back to 
England and they were trucking us down to Lahar, France, where they'd de-louse you and feed you and, and uh, we'd get a bath. And from there they'd load us and send us back to America. We were halfway across the Atlantic when the Germans surrendered. So they turned their lights on on the boat.